I can't remember when there'd been so much fog in the harbor. It was like a giant cloud that, that came down from the sky. George had been away on a long ocean job, and he was telling the tugs all about it. Oh, yes, I was up in the Arctic, George boomed in his biggest voice. That's way up at the top of the whole world. Now, the other tugs always loved to hear stories about what it was like way out on the open ocean. They always seemed so exciting. The water in the Arctic had icebergs that were even bigger than I am, continued George, obviously enjoying his own story. In fact, the only thing more exciting than telling stories about the ocean was going on the ocean. All the tugs thought it was the very best thing that any tug could do. Well, just then, the dispatcher turned to the tugs to begin the morning work meeting. A big cargo ship is arriving. Theodore and Hank, I would like you to bring her in. Now, continued the dispatcher, I'm sending one tug across the ocean to France to pick up a new barge for the harbor. Vodak smiled inside and out. It was his turn for an ocean job. Going all the way to France would be great. He was sure to have wonderful stories to tell after that. Emily, said the dispatcher, please leave for the ocean as soon as you are ready. That is all. Fodok was startled. Emily, it was supposed to be his turn for an ocean job. Why had the dispatcher chosen Emily and not him? Just as Fodok was turning to go, the dispatcher called out in his most serious voice. Fodok, I would like to have a word with you. The dispatcher cleared his throat a little the way he did when he was making an important announcement. <clears throat> Fodok the Vigilant, he began. You are the only tugboat in the harbor with special safety equipment. Uh, yes, I, I am, replied Fodok. Because you're special, continued the dispatcher, it has been decided that from now on, you will stay here in the harbor and be our official safety tug. You will begin your new job this morning. Yes, sir said Fodok in his bravest voice, but inside he began to feel terrible. All he could think of was those awful words. Stay in the harbor. And that meant he couldn't go out on the ocean again. As Emily left the harbor for her long ocean voyage to France, she gave a farewell whistle. The sound of Emily's whistle saying goodbye made Fodok feel even worse. He wished he were going all the way across the ocean. And instead, he was going on his first safety patrol all the way across the harbor. It was all because he was special. Well, right now, being special didn't feel that good. Maybe staying in the harbor won't be so bad, he thought, trying to cheer himself up. Maybe there are lots of things for a harbor safety tug to do. Fodok floated along through the fog. Something could be floating in the water, he was thinking. And a ship might not see it through all this fog. Might could be dangerous. Fodok listened to his special sonar. Now, the sounds from Fodok's sonar machine told him if he was close to anything in the water. You know, even when he couldn't see it with his own eyes. And right now, his sonar machine made a slow poing-poing sound that meant there was nothing close by. Suddenly, the sonar machine began to poing faster and faster. Something must be in the water, thought Fodok. I don't hear anything else, so it can't be a ship. It might be a dangerous floating log. Fodok turned on his special spotlights to help him see the log. But it wasn't a log. It was Northumberland's submarine, slipping silently towards his dock. Fodak, said Northumberland. Uh, we submarines like to stay out of sight. Uh, could you please turn off that bright light? Sorry, said Fodak. I, I thought you were a giant log. Now, Northumberland wasn't very pleased to be mistaken for a log, and he floated off without another word to Fodak. Fodak continued on his safety inspection. He was feeling a little foolish about what had happened with Northumberland, and more eager than ever to do something really useful. 
What good is being the safety tug anyway? He called to the fog. I've been everywhere in the harbor and there's nothing for me to do. Fodak wished he could go out on the ocean. He stared sadly towards Rocky Point, where, where the harbor ended and the ocean began. Maybe I should check there, he thought. See, now, the Rocky Point is a sharp piece of land that sticks out at the entrance of the harbor. It has a lot of dangerous rocks around it, and sometimes ships who don't know the harbor very well can come dangerously close to it. Now, there's probably nothing for me to do there either, he thought to himself. Just around this time, our friends Theodore and Hank were starting to help a cargo ship into the harbor with Petra, the pilot boat, who was there to guide them along. The tugs hadn't got too far before they realized Petra had disappeared in the thick fog. They knew they were lost. What do we do, Theodore? said Hank. Keep pulling, replied Theodore, and hope we're going in the right direction. A rocky point has a light on it to warn ships away from its dangerous rocky shore. But Theodore and Hank couldn't see that light through the thick fog. And that was too bad, because they were heading right for those rocks. Fodak was floating along when he heard it. His special sonar machine was telling him that something was out there in the water. And it sounded like something big, moving straight towards Rocky Point. Fodak knew what he had to do. That sound almost froze Theodore's heart. There was only one sound like it in the whole harbor. Fodak's special emergency whistle. You see, all the ships and boats in the big harbor are trained when they hear Fodak's emergency whistle to stop whatever they're doing and whistle back immediately. Now that says, I'm over here and I hear you. And that is what Theodore and Hank did. They whistled as loud as they could and stopped moving the cargo ship. The tugboats turned to see Fodak hurrying towards them, shining his special spotlights. And then they saw that they'd almost run right into Rocky Point with the cargo ship. Fodak, shouted Hank. You saved us. I did, said Fodak. But we still have to get this ship to her dock, said Theodore. And it's so hard to see. How are we ever going to find our way through the harbor? Yes, what'll we do? Called the ship. Fodak shouted. I have it. Have what, Fodak? Asked Theodore. Here, he continued, and he explained his plan to the tugs. Well, I have to say, it was a wonderful plan. Wonderful. The tugs couldn't see, of course, through the fog. But here's what they did. Fodak led the way. He listened to his sonar machine to make sure that they weren't near any dangerous rocks. He used his special spotlights to help the tug see a little better through the fog. And every so often, he blew his emergency whistle to warn anyone nearby that they were coming. As soon as they heard Fodak's whistle, everyone in the harbor answered back in their own special way, I'm over here, and I hear you. And that way, the tugboats knew exactly where they were. That's Bedford Bowie, shouted Theodore. He's always guarding the entrance to the harbor. We're getting closer. There's Lily Lighthouse calling, said Hank. That must mean we're at Willie's Island in the middle of the harbor. Next, they heard a soft toot, and they all knew who that was. Fillmore, said Theodore. And Philip, shouted Hank. We're almost at the cargo docks. Keep, said Fillmore. Going, concluded Philip. 
Almost home, tugboats, called Benjamin. Almost home. Using his special equipment, Foduck led the way straight as an arrow through that foggy harbor. We're doing it, shouted Hank. We're doing it. Good work. Soon, the tugs were safely at the cargo docks with the ship. Hooray! shouted Hank. We did it! Thanks to Fodux, smiled Theodore. You found us and brought us in with your special equipment. Now, Fodux smiled too. He had done something special, and that did feel great. It's a good thing you rode on your harbor safety patrol, said Hank. Fodok didn't say anything. At first, he hadn't wanted to be the harbor safety tug. But now, well, things seem different. The tugboats set off for the great ocean dock together. And just then, as if by magic, the fog lifted and the sun came out. Ah, oh, it was a beautiful sight. There are the fairy twins, said Theodore. And Constance, said Hank. And Lily Lighthouse, too. The tugs could see all their friends in the big harbor again. You know, said Fodok, who had been thinking very hard about something. This harbor really is a wonderful place to be. It sure is, agreed Hank and Theodore. And maybe, quite possibly, Fodok said quietly, it will be a wonderful place to be the official harbor safety tug. A wonderful place indeed.